the BP Water Coolers WP Blab episode number 137. Today we're going to be talking about Get Ready for WordCamp US with myself, Jason Tucker, and my awesome friend, Bridget Willard. Hi. WP Water Cooler, WP Water Coolers WP Blab is made possible this week by our sponsors, ServerPress, Vendor Fuel, and Kinsta. Um, ServerPress, makers of desktop server, they make local WordPress development easy. Check them out over at serverpress.com. Now, I want to let you know one thing real quick. So this show, WP Blab, is also a podcast. It's also a, a video show. So depending on which way you're watching us or listening to us, you can do both of them. And you can go over to wpwarcore.com slash subscribe, where you can learn how to subscribe to this content as well as all the other content that we have going on the network. So, Bridget, we don't have uh, any anybody, any guests or anything like that, but all of our friends are guests. That's true. So let's uh, let's let's introduce ourselves. How about that, Bridget? Tell us about yourself. Hey, everybody! I'm Bridget Willard. You can find me at bridgetwillard.com. I specialize in marketing, WordPress products and agencies, and I love it. It's super fun. I will be giving a workshop at WordCamp US this year about how to write your bio for your social profiles and speakers. Nice. Awesome. I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me over at Jason Tucker on Twitter. My website is jasontucker.blog. Um, I, like I said earlier, I do this show as well as another show called WP Water Cooler. You can go take a look at that. Um, I did want to let you know that um, this show um, is definitely sponsored by ServerPress. Um, and I wanted to make sure that you're able to see it up on the screen there. So feel free to go take a look at that. That's over at serverpress.com. Um, they also have another thing called WP Site Sync, where you can you can uh, sync your sites between your local to dev and back and forth and all those fun things. So go take a look at that. All righty. So let's talk a little bit about preparing yourself for a WordCamp. And the the kind of the premise of this, at least the way that I was cooking this up in my brain while I was at work today, and yes, by the way, we did come up with this topic today, um, is uh, is you know I want you to I want you to feel like you're prepared to go to a WordCamp, and I want you to feel like you're prepared to be able to uh, send people to your websites, make sure that they're able to find your information about you. All that stuff that Bridget like nonstop preaches about on the show. <laughs> I want you to know that you go to somebody goes to one of your things and they're going to be able to get information about you. And um, I, I wanted to start off by the one both Bridget and I do all the time. Every time we go to an event is take out your phone, get the nicest selfie you can and change all of your avatars. Go on Twitter, go on Facebook go on Instagram, go on any of those places that you're, that you're posting to. If you're a developer and using like dev.2.0, uh, to, or if you're, um, if you're somebody who's, uh, going to be posting a bunch of blog posts, maybe upgrade or update your, uh, Gravatar, like get all those figured out and done. And the reason why you want to do that is when someone walks up to you, you look like the person that's in your avatar. You're gonna walk up to Bridget and she's wearing that pink shirt from North Carolina. And you're going to be like, I know that's Bridget. And you're going to look at your phone and you're going to look at her and say, yep, that's you. And then that's it. Yeah. So. Especially women and men with hair. Okay. So <laughs> we, I mean, men change their beards. So like if you shaved your beard, <laughs> you would be in witness protection. Right? <laughs> and then we're like, we're always changing our hair color. Right. Uh, or if you wear glasses, then have glasses on in your picture. Okay. Um, just as an aside, and not totally as an aside, but reality, WordCamp US is in November in St. Louis. Okay, so W Underground, Weather Underground is my favorite weather app. And I'm looking at the weather right now. It's 47 degrees in St. Louis, Missouri currently. Oh, let's look at the forecast. October 31, 40% chance of snow. That's right, folks, snow. So I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to pack with just a carry-on when it's going to be snowing. So clearly, I'm going to need to wear my boots and some kind of jacket. The high is 48. The high is 48. Uh -huh. Why don't you just have it in Vermont? Come on, you guys. <laughs> uh, and the lowest 29, uh, Friday the 1st, 51.32. Saturday the 2nd, 56.36. So it's going to be chilly, 
chilly outside, but remember inside, just like we had in Philadelphia, uh, they have coat racks because it, <laughs> in these kind of places, they heat their buildings to like, I don't know, 76 degrees or something ridiculous. Uh, so um, that I would definitely pay attention to the weather. The weather is a giant factor in a city you don't know. And if you don't have the right clothes, sometimes you just feel so uncomfortable. Uh, this is, I mean, maybe it's a girl thing, but I will tell you, I was on vacation in Visalia. I was wearing pants. I had no business wearing. Guess what? I was super uncomfortable because they were a little too small. And so they were yeah. like, they were like cutting in. And then I didn't want to be out. I didn't want to be out dancing. I didn't want to be out with people. I wanted to go home and put on my pajamas. So like, think about the weather and your comfort level and, re and realistically wear what makes you feel comfortable and confident and that yeah. that's tricky when it comes to shoes so like you have to deal with the weather right but also you want to be comfortable so i know you just bought those jimmy chews not the best shoes for a word camp too much standing yeah I agree. <laughs> um, for me, you know, I, I'm from Southern California. Um, I can wear shorts. I could wear a t-shirt. I could wear flip flops and I don't look, I could wear that anywhere. And I don't look out of place because I'm from California and this is what we do. When you live in a snowy state and you leave that snowy state to go someplace else, you can wear shorts, a t-shirt and flip flops. And right. people that live in very snowy places and they've been living there their entire lives. Guess what they wear? shorts, t-shirt and flip-flops. The, the it, You can get away with it in many different ways in many different places. If you live in Hawaii and you come here to Southern California to speak, you can wear those sorts of things. It's okay to wear that stuff. Um, but with Bridget saying, when you're going from inside to outside and outside to inside, pretend that you are in the environment that you're always in, in your office. Like they, they set the temperature down to just the right spot, supposedly. Sometimes it feels like it's too hot to me. And um, I, I don't want to be in pants and I don't want to be in all that stuff. Now, if you're trying to be professional and you're wanting to make sure that people, you know, look at you in a certain light. Okay. I get it. But um, you're also probably going to sweat if you're wearing um, a, a tie with a, a suit and, you know, like, yeah. I yeah. still be comfortable. <laughs> like this is what I did for Dallas. I learned from Visalia. And that wasn't yeah. even a business trip. I tried on every single thing because my <laughs> weight is really in flux with menopause and I'm in the middle of changing my sure. friends and stuff like that. So yep. that happens. So yeah. even though, you know, you, that's the perfect, that's the perfect outfit. Bring it. I know you're not supposed to overpack and Marie Condolo or whatever the, what's her name? <laughs> yeah. Like Marie Kondo. Yep. Marie Kondo. Like I watched one of her videos. I'm like, pack that when it's dirty. <laughs> right. And that, let me see those videos, right? And so, because uh, I did, I went to Dallas with the carry on. Uh, I did yeah. it. I couldn't believe it. And I was talking to Sarah Pressler, and she said, "I go, yeah. How am I supposed to pack it?" She goes, "The same way you packed it. Fold it. Fold your dirty laundry. It's gross. It's really gross. But bring extra Ziplocs, like, things like that. That helps. And a dryer sheet." So going back to, to yourself and worrying about yourself, the one that I would say is go get a haircut. Like, please go get a haircut. If you're, if you're a guy, get a haircut. If you're a girl, get your hair did, go, go get all that stuff done. And the reason why is you want to look your best because you're going to be going to these places. People are going to be taking pictures. There's going to be selfies all over the place. If you're speaking, then you're going to be in front of a bunch of people. Um, some people say to get your haircut a week before you go. So that way it doesn't look like you just got your haircut. Um, uh, other people say that, uh, you should get your haircut immediately and then go. Um, if you were like my son, who's a Marine, you'd need to get your haircut within like a day of going to wherever it is you're going, but they're, they're all, everyone's different, but definitely make sure you go get your haircut. If you're going to, with that also go get your nails done, make sure you get manicure, pedicures, all that fun stuff. Um, those are things that are making, they're going to make you feel confident and they're going to make you want to stand up proud and walk around and, and do all that sort of thing. Yeah. Now I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pitch this one to you, Bridget, and I want you to take, take off with it, but please, whatever you do, wear sensible shoes. 
That's what I'm talking about. You're going to stand up for like 12 shoes. hours. There's going to be a lot of standing. The Jimmy Choo stay at home. Sorry. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I have some Clarks that I really like. Uh, they're, they're, um, uh, boots and I can't mm -hmm. stand in those. I have another pair of Clarks that are kind of high heel boots and I can't stand in those. But seriously, if you, mm -mm, that's a thing, yeah. man, you got to be able to stand in those shoes. And, and, and the truth is you're going to be walking around. Right. And even if you get an Uber, you're going to go this party or that party. And I got a new thing. That was my tour tip of the week, but it also <laughs> means charge it, charge it. You should probably charge. Six. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, make, make sure you wear sense. Make sure you wear sensible shoes. And if you, if you're the kind of person that, and I've seen people do this when they go to word camps, they'll, they'll have two, two outfits that they're going to wear. They have the outfit that they're going to wear when they're, they're doing their thing. There's always a gap between the end of the word camp and actually, you know, going to the after party or whatever it is that they're going to be calling it uh, the word fest thing. You don't have to immediately go to this thing. They don't want you to. They're not even ready for you to go there. So go back to your, your hotel room, get changed up real quick, uh, get freshened up a little bit and then get back out there and go again. And you can wear a different outfit. And so if, if it feels like the temperature change, maybe this thing's going to be a little bit indoor outdoor. Maybe you have to walk a little ways to get to the thing. Um, plan ahead a little bit and kind of get those things worked out. And it's okay to change your clothes. And I see plenty of people do change their clothes and it, they, they just want to feel like, you know, they want to feel more comfortable than they were when they were at that word camp. Right. And that includes speakers. You might want to have a different outfit for when you're speaking. Because you will be photographed. And Carrie Lee London used to tell us, brush your teeth after lunch if you're going to, I mean, just bring yep. a little thing or they have little disposable ones, especially if you're speaking. Uh, make sure because, you know, we're eating lunch, talking to people, and that's really important. Also, yeah, and, and sometimes though, that's the only time you're going to be having your photo taken for that entire year or that entire quarter or that whatever is when you're actually doing those speaking engagements. So yeah, make sure you're, you're, you're looking your best. So that way photos turn out nice. Yeah. You're, and because if they do, they're usually open source slash creative commons and you can use them on your web property, which, yep. you know, we love putting those kinds of things back on the web. I mean, so I had this happen to me in Vegas. I was wearing, I bought my little polo shirt that had my logo, but I gained like 10 pounds. And then that whole outfit didn't work. Like it, it fit. But when I saw the pictures, I was like, mm, no, Bridget. <laughs> and it wasn't bad, but I know it was bad. So then I went shopping with, Sarah at Dallas Fort where she wanted to get something more comfortable. She was like, Oh, an A-line dress would be so cute on you. So I, so then, so I was like, Oh, I have this A-line dress. I'm speaking on Sunday. I had two, I brought two different shirts to wear and jeans that I had tried on. But then I thought, you know what? I'll wear this A-line dress and then it won't be like so much on the belly, you know? We're all different shapes and sizes, right? But I don't really yep. want. But when you're when people are sitting, they're looking at your belly. So and then, even though I so I felt like so girly and flirty, and, but this is why I want to talk about dresses. Okay. They had to put the wireless up here. Uh yeah yeah I yeah. Had no pockets. So guess uh -huh. what happened? It kept going like this. Oh, because this was weighing my weighing right. it down, and then my dress was coming up in the front. Uh huh. So a dress can be good. Make sure you have a belt or something if you're speaking. What time I right. speaking? Right. They're gonna want to wire you up a lavalier, and also if they are wiring you for sound, no necklaces. No necklaces. <laughs> I was I was the MC of um of one of the rooms at WordCamp Long Beach and a lady came in and she was wearing a beautiful necklace and it it made sense with her outfit. It looked great. And she's like, what do I do with this necklace? And I'm like, you're gonna have to take that off. And she's like, okay. And so she took it off. She's like, well, okay. And I'm like, you're gonna be standing in front of the podium. So 
you know, and she's like, yeah, that's true. Okay. And so she, you know, she was trying to figure out where to pin it. And, and we had a very nicely done professional, you know, camera system that was set up there. And that camera guy just had it all done. Right. And he had multiple camera angles, all sorts of stuff. And so, um, because of that, she was like, she's like, is this going to move around or anything? And, um, you know, you had to, we had to show her you're going to be fine. So we got rid of that. Got And also don't wear that lanyard, like get rid of that thing immediately. You do not need the lanyard at Nothing all. Nothing around your neck. Everyone knows who you are. They're going to have, you know, this down here on the screen kind of thing with your name on it. Your slides are probably going to have your name on it and all of that. So you're fine. Oh yeah. Speaking of slides. Yeah. You're not allowed to have your logo on every slide. If you're sponsored, it can't be a company logo. You can have a mention at the end. Oh. It, it's kind of a new, more formalized rule. But, I mean, if you're speaking at WordCamp US, your slides are due October by October 11th. But they're, like, giving it to the 28th. I already turned mine in because I'm just doing a workshop. But, yeah, you're – but in general, that's the new thing. And you're not supposed to pitch. Just, rem just remind yourself. Yeah. It's hard because you we go – as business people, we're going from nonprofit things like WordCamp, where it's just supposed to be 90% educational, to like being in front of a client going, but wait, there's more. And if you act now, you could totally do uh -huh. this. And, yeah, you want my services. And I'll give you a, another discount. And here's the discount code. And none of that in WordCamps. Right. Right. Huh. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's another newish. I mean, so you can, have, can you have your own logo on there and your own contact info? Is that uh, is that okay? Yeah, you can have your own contact info, but it's not supposed to be a pitch for a company. So that's why it's a little crazy because a lot of us are freelancers or agencies right. of one, as Nathan Alote says. <laughs> like, I mean, whatever. Like the point being that if you're sponsored by GoDaddy or Kinsta or Vendor Fuel, you cannot be having those slides on everything. You can right. wear their shirt. But you can't have their slide. You can't have their logo on every slide. Yeah. New rule. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Well, one of the things I was thinking about um, when we were kind of getting this figure uh, figured out here is, I, I know lots of folks will write a blog post before they go to WordCamp, and they'll they'll write something where they're essentially saying like it's almost like a call. There's like a bit of a call to action there. Where it's like, um, you know, uh, I'm available for the next, you know, quarter to do some work, or um, this is the type of work that I do, or um, anything like that. But they're tying it into like almost like doing a long form or short, sorry, like a short form story of going to WordCamp. Um, how do you feel about that, Bridget? And what's the right way somebody should be approaching writing a blog post on their either the personal site or or whatever? I mean, I think it's fine. I mean, I used to be all gung ho about it, but honestly, it's not evergreen content. What would be better is to do a blog post about your talk and make it evergreen. And then when you tweet about it or post about it on social, you can say, oh, by the way, I'm giving this talk at WordCamp US, WordCamp Seattle, WordCamp Boise, et cetera. Right. But, and then it's, then it's really double duty. But when you have a lot of content on, this is my opinion, obviously. I'm opinionated. Yep, that's yep. what I'm here for. But I feel like as somebody who does social for companies that have a lot of dated material, I can't mm -hmm. use that anymore. You wasted this on your content. Maybe it's easy to fill a content calendar, but then it's not good for me to share later, right? Right. So, it's, so like for me, I gave a talk about product marketing and learning from the automobile industry. I didn't write a blog post that said all that. Um, I am using Alan Schlesinger's uh, talks plugin that, you know, uh, makes a custom post type and stuff. So it's like that oh. part's all there, but it's not part of my blog. It's on the speaking page. Um, and so that just aggregates. But if, but I was thinking about it because on Fridays, I do my own blog post for my own website, right? So instead of saying, oh, I'm going to WordCamp Dallas Fort Worth, or I went to WordCamp Dallas Fort Worth, right? Or I'm going to US, or I came back from US, 
and I've done this. I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's bad, but now this many years in, because I've been going since 2013 and I always did a recap post is either I do a recap from the perspective of like, this is what I learned overall in the business track. Like these mm. were the overall themes or do something more generic. Like I, I did a post from Alex Vasquez's talk that said, you don't, if you don't value yourself, no one else will from 2014 orange county so that's still true right it's not hey i went to orange county and the food was great and i met a lot of friends picture 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 like that's right. fine but to me that should be a social media post now that i'm thinking more like a marketing manager editorial calendar person we want it all as evergreen as possible i want all conifers in my editorial <laughs> calendar right um so i feel like what's what's temporary is what's good for social so that's kind of like what i would do yeah unless you're hosting a party then just make it a landing page if you're collecting rsvps or something or mm -hmm. you have a meetup like the women in wp are hosting a cocktail hour so they just right. make it on eventbrite it doesn't need to be part of your blog yeah that makes sense i know that's that's kind of how i've evolved since 2013 last six years mm -hmm of blogging about because i did it i did recaps one year i did three recaps out of orange county because that i did it more by subject and then i'm starting to think hmm this isn't very evergreen right yeah we're like i mean the content that we're doing here right now talking about these things shows that this is an evergreen type content because we're not talking about a specific year or things that are going on like it, it's more about it's more about like the types of things that you should do leading up to it or even towards the end of it, which we can definitely talk about um, as well. You know, a lot of those word camps um, or a lot of word camps in general will give you like a little graphic that says like, I'm speaking at blah, blah, blah. And I've never really figured out what you should do with that. I mean, it's, it sounds like it's good in theory, but I don't know, like, I, I don't you know. know. It's... I had blog rolls on the sidebar. I feel like it was for that. Okay. Yeah. But we don't do that anymore. So it really should just be a, a square for Instagram or Facebook. I'm speaking. Right. Yeah. Like, you yeah. don't really click on it anymore, do you? So it doesn't, mm -mm. it's just an outdated technology we keep doing because we've always done it this way. Right. Um, but speaking of that, like WordCamp US, WordCamp Asia, WordCamp Europe, these are the big ones. Yep. There's going to be 2,000 people there. You will be overwhelmed. Uh huh. So let's talk about a bunch of introverts collecting together and some survival skills. Don't go right. to every session. Do not go to every session. Yeah. Find a quiet place to debrief <laughs> yourself. Line up early for lunch. Um, go sit at a blank table and have other people sit with you. If you don't, if you went by yourself or you're meet, meeting up with other people, take a nap. It's okay to take a nap. Also, this year, I watched the state of the word from my hotel room because it was on the internet streaming. And of course, we uh -huh. did a show, you and me and right. Jen. <laughs> because I'm not lining up like it's a Star Wars, okay? No. I'm not going to line up for Star Wars anymore. Love you, Matt <laughs> Mullenweg. Thanks for doing this thing 16 years ago, not staying in that line just so I could say I was in the room captive for three hours and he can't use the bathroom so yeah. there's like there's physical things like as you're older like you need to be able to use the restroom <laughs> menopause you've had children you're diabetic you're on you drink a lot of water you drink a lot of water <laughs> i'm on a diuretic now for blood pressure so yep. you know okay so let's talk about medications super quick yeah while you're traveling Keep it in the actual prescription bottle, in a Ziploc, in your carry-on bag, on your person. Don't even trust it to your carry-on bag be because if you're on American Airlines and you're in Group 9, there's an 80% chance that's getting checked. And if they lose your luggage, the reason why I have this shirt is because American Airlines didn't make my connection on time. Oh, I got stuck no. in Scotland, right? Oh. Okay, so, but my medication was with me. I didn't have an extra pair of underwear, which now I do. I do. I have my medication and underwear in, in a Ziploc 
in my actual backpack that's never uh-huh. gonna be check bags. Yeah, that's important. Like we're not all twenty year olds anymore. Yep. Some of us have little health problems or whatever. Yeah, that's where that's where packing cubes come in um, pretty nicely. If you've never used a packing cube before, packing cubes are are sweet for that because you can take that stuff and literally just jam it in there. I mean, you can always get an iron. Don't worry about it. Jam your stuff all in there. Shove it at the bottom of your bag. Um, if anything, it's just going to help with, uh, you know, all you dropping your stuff in your bag over and over again. And yeah, yeah. Have a couple, couple packing cubes that have that pair of shorts, that underwear, that socks and a t-shirt. And at least you can now go to the store and buy proper clothing instead of having to worry about like, you know, something happened. Yeah. Airport shirt for the win. <laughs> no, no, but definitely your medication and then, yes. um, roll those fabrics. Yep. Roll them so it's it for wrinkles. But then again, hang it up as soon as you get into your hotel room, Airbnb or whatever. If you put it in the bathroom, it's even better because the steam will let the wrinkles kind of, you know, fall out. And they they usually have irons. If they're really that worried, I'm not. As soon as I sit down, it's going to get wrinkled again. Right. So, um, that, so like that's some of those introvert tips. Like just – and you don't have to go to every session. It really doesn't matter. But go and go to pay attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, in preparation, as much as you can, and I do this, it's, it makes it kind of like stressful. But if you, are your, if you are working because you are your own boss, i.e. freelancer, agency, whatever, do as much work ahead of time as possible and let your people know. Today I sent on a MailChimp. I'm like, I got seven working days left this month. I'm going to be going to U.S. I'm going to go to Seattle. If you need me, I am working this weekend, but that's like, that's it. Like that's what's, re- that's reality, you know? Yeah. Um, because you are not going to have time to work like you think you are. I'm super good at like scheduling my time. So save that time for emergency client stuff, but get your regular stuff done. So you can enjoy it. You're spending all this money to go there. Enjoy it. It's not not just fifty dollars. It's all the travel, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And and when you're when you're at you know when you're at a a Starbucks or a coffee bean and tea leaf or wherever it is that's you know some or even just like horrible coffee that that's you know some unbranded thing and you're sitting there and you're like okay I I need to get some work done. I have horrible Wi-Fi. You're you're on you're on Wi-Fi at an airport, which is very very scary. And you also want to make sure that you're using a VPN. <laughs> so I've talked about VPNs uh, in the past on um, on WP Water Cooler. We actually for a little while had uh, a VPN uh, sponsor us. And VPNs are super important because it makes it so that when you're on public Wi-Fi, especially when it doesn't have a little lock and it doesn't ask you for a password everything is out in the open. And so if you have to sit at an airport or even um, hotel Wi-Fi, make sure you're using a VPN. There's a whole bunch of VPN providers that are out there. Um, I would suggest asking someone on Twitter, asking someone on Facebook, hey, what VPN provider do you use? Um, Don't type in what is a free VPN or how do I get a free (laughs) VPN? Please don't do that. You're just you're you're in the you're going to be in just the bad just as bad shape of doing a free VPN. Just like we don't tell you go buy a free um a free uh like a free theme or something like that. Um, that's bad too. <laughs> so yeah, free v, free VPN. No, don't do that. But definitely oh use a VPN. Goodness. Yeah, I mean like this reality, right? Yep. So. Uh, wow, that light really got charged. Now it's kind of like, right. I, I think I'm going to do it. Turned, it like turned everything all like frosty. <laughs> like, I don't need that much. Of, okay, so we have a 30-minute mark sponsor, don't we? Yeah, we sure do. Uh, let's tell you a little bit about something that uh, that that that's awesome and is is great. And we were, t- we were just talking about... Uh, using amazing products. And so if you're tired of um, unreliable or slow web hosting, check out Kinsta.com, who takes managed WordPress hosting to the next level. Level up. 
level up exactly. Uh, powered by Google Cloud, all of their plans include PHP 7.3, SSH access for developers, one-click staging area, which is one of my favorites, uh, 20 global data centers, free SSL, free CDN, and 24-7 expert support who will also migrate your site free of charge. They didn't tell me to say this, but I will tell you right now, if you're at a web host who is charging you for SSL, charging you for SSL, get off of them. They do not need to be charging you for SSL. Check you out, girl. I know it comes in Spanish. I mean, it comes in English <laughs> and French. That's awesome. But so yeah, far. go if, if you're using a web host that ha that is charging you for SSL, please move to someplace else. And if you move to someplace like Kinsta, they'll move you for you, and they won't charge you for SSL. So you're going to save a couple bucks. So please definitely do that. <laughs> go check them out over at Kinsta.com. Could you imagine if your apartment rental goes? Free migration services. Really? We come pack up my data? It's all over the place. <laughs> 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 Seriously, pa packing is a thing. So you might also want to bring a, a little extra bag or backpack or leave room in your backpack for swag. Yeah. If you're a swagaholic. Yep. I mean, that's where I got the unnamed beaver from. So beaver, jealous. Beaver buddy. <laughs> I mean, Beaver Press, I call him Buddy the Beaver. They refuse to name him. They think his name is Beaver. <laughs> I had an extensive conversation with Robbie and Brent, but, you know, whatever. But I got this at U.S. So, yeah. like, I had to be able to take this home, right? So, in that in that regard, I kind of like checking my bags, but it costs extra. You know, mm -hmm. toiletries are so much easier. Uh, but, yeah, so um, if you are specifically trying to be with certain people, it does help to reach out ahead of time and make appointments. It feels a little weird sometimes like, hey, can I meet with you at 11 o'clock on Saturday? <laughs> but Flywheel reached out to me and they're like, we wanna to talk to you at US. I'm like, okay, how about an appointment? I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I guess I could do it. It feels really official. Like it feels like I'm going to the principal's office, but like whatever, you know, <laughs> but like that's intentional, right? So, because it's so easy to get distracted. Last yeah. year, I was working with Plesk. I didn't even go to any sessions because I was just helping them with this video project. And so, it's you know, if you if you are intent, if you are really wanting to get with Brian Lee Jackson of Kinsta, or you're really wanting to talk to so and so, use those Twitter DMs, reach out to them, say, "Hey, I saw you're going. I really want 15 minutes of your time. Is this possible?" Let's schedule an appointment. Like, just be be courteous about it because it is a really it's the big boys. It's our big trade show, you yeah. know. And if you're all locked down and you don't follow people back, first of all, tisk tisk. You don't know how to use lists, but open your Twitter DMs. That works. Um, or just say, hey, I'm going to WordCamp US. Send me an email at blah 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 blah. blah. I mean, they they emailed me. I don't even know how they got my email. They probably <laughs> Googled me and found it on my website. But yep. um, like that kind of thing. I mean, it, since it is such a big camp. Now, WordCamp US does two years in every city. So the first year we went to Nashville, it was like, oh, where's this? Where's that? Second year, we knew where everything was. Mm -hmm. So WordCamp US is now in St. Louis. It's going to be there for two years. They've done a very good job at writing blog posts about what to do there and who to hang out with and blah, 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 blah. So, uh, you know, go find out what those places are. Make your plan. Um, it gets really stressful to me mm -hmm. when it's like, oh, my gosh, who are we hanging out with? Who are we going to dinner with? Yeah. Like, uh, I, w I was budding around with Amy last year. But otherwise, uh, and the year before with Jen, otherwise I really kind of like being by myself <laughs> and then just doing whatever. But if you are butting up with somebody, like consider them yeah. when you're accepting invitations to parties and stuff. Like, go, oh, I want to hang out with so-and-so. Can they come too? Because if they can't, do you really want to be that person? 
Right. Especially if you're, if you're the person and I, I just kind of picked up on this, um, on this terminology of the Pac-Man rule, which is if you, if oh. you make a circle around a bunch of people, make sure you leave an opening so people can join in. So when those people join in, that usually means like a, a few things. It could be that they don't know anybody there. And it just so happens that you left a space open and now they want to stand next to you guys and talk. But also you, you, you should at some point at least establish like, is this going to be a WordCamp relationship that is going to be for the, for the duration? Or is this something where the person's just jumping in to say hi, maybe hand out a business card or whatever, and then they're going to bounce. But if it ends up being something like that, you're right. See if you can incorp incorporate them in whatever it is that they're doing, because especially if it's their first WordCamp, you don't know anything about them. You don't know if it's their if if it's their um, if they're only time going to come to a word camp or that they're going to have a bad experience because they weren't invited to something. Um, see if you can, you know, especially if everything, you know, everything works out and um, the whole group kind of hits it off. Hey, you know, do you want to come with us to one of these things? Um, have you ever used this product before? Uh, essentially act like a little bit of an evangelist and be like, yeah. hey, so have you ever used this product before? Well, these guys are going to be paying for dinner. Do you want to come hang out? Yeah. You know, like that's the sort of thing that, and also don't go and invite somebody if you don't have the ability to invite somebody. That right? is even that is even worse that's off. so bad. And I've, and I've had that happen to me too, where they're just like, hey, you have that thing where you're like, hey, so are you going to dinner? And they're like, you know, I'm thinking about dinner. Not saying like, but I'm not sure if you're invited to the same dinner that I am. And then you get there and like everyone you know is there. And you're like, wow, none of us actually like talked about this. I know. So and I don't know what the I don't know what the right way is or the code word is to to talk about that, but it, it always makes me feel weird. And especially after the fact, because you show up there and you're just like, oh, so everyone else showed up too. It That's cool. It's weird but, because there's exclusive events and an inclusive thing, but that's the way it is. It's not meant to be that way, but it's a very good opportunity for companies to appreciate their customers. And so right. if the engine wants to have a thing, that's fine. I'm yep, not yep. the customer. I don't need to be invited. They always invite me for some reason, but <laughs> I don't need to be invited. I My hosting's with Pressable. You know, yeah. I can still like, but I'm just saying, that's <laughs> and, you know, I mean, so it is a little awkward and it's not, I would just, this is the other thing I would say, if this, if this is the work for everybody, nobody is trying to exclude you specifically. Right. It's true. not personal. That's uh, true. So many people forget, they lose their mind. They can't yep. remember who you are. They're going to mess your name up. Don't go crying in the bathroom. You can vent to me on Twitter and I'll be like, oh, I'm sure they know you who you are. I'm sure it's going to be okay. But like, it, it really does feel like crap when you feel like you're getting discluded, especially if you already have ongoing mental health issues like I do. Because I can tell you how many people hate me in 30 seconds. Like, that's easy for me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like once you get in that funk, then it's like everybody hates me. Nobody loves me. I'm going to go eat worms or whatever. <laughs> uh, just like find a safe person. Yeah. But, I mean, if you, if you're worried about that, then I'm going to tell you right now, just send me a DM on Twitter. Cause I get it. It's yep. not, I it really, it really isn't about you specifically. Also, if you are a person who's very particular about, your name, pronunciation, and or your pronouns. I feel like it's on you to be the person who says, my name is pronounced Brigitte. Mm. And I use they, them. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're not trying to offend people. We're reading your name tag. Also, I like to put my name tag. I like to, these name tags are ridiculous, okay? I like to bring a safety pin and put it up here. My, because I don't want to look at your belly and I don't want you looking at my belly, but like the size differences in name tags. Okay. Orange so County. What the heck Seattle. is that thing over on your goodness gracious? That thing's huge. This is Seattle. This is wow. County. Wow. This is my iPhone. <laughs> 10 R. 
Seattle's name. Oh my gosh, Seattle! What are you doing? I didn't even tell you about Dallas Fort Worth. It's a half page. I bet it was big. It's a half page. Everything because everything's big in Texas. Right. I have a I have a comment here. So someone left a um, A Smith writings writes. I love uh, Allison. uh, depending on depending on the season, one option for accommodations is to check out residences on college campus. Um, often cheap, clean, and near local restaurants and the camp. Oh, that is an excellent tip. And then another one is for names. If you're confused on pronunciation, you can always ask. People are are usually happy that you care enough to get it right. Oh, that's true. Uh, Allison's one of my favorite people on the planet. We should also have her as a guest. And Brianna says, uh, looking forward to seeing you guys this week. Well, she'll be seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be attending, unfortunately. I'll be watching uh, Matt's uh, talk from um, the comfort of my, I guess it would be my office at work, maybe? I don't know. We'll have to figure out what the timing is like we that on that. I do a Mystery Science Theater 3000 again. Yes, we should. Alive. That oh was my so gosh. Fun. And if we did it on this where I can bring in other people, oh my goodness. Let's make that happen, Bridget. Yeah, That's gonna be it. fun. Send me a Google Calendar invite. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it happen. I'll send it out. We'll 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 totally make this happen. That was so fun last year. But okay, so that's another really good tip. Oh, extra cables. Yes. 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 I call it the dongle bag. You need to bring the dongle bag. And that's because you get to say dongle bag and it's fun. But yeah. yeah, make sure you bring all those dongles, all the things like I bring no joke. I don't even have one of these laptops anymore, but when <laughs> I, cause mine's USB-C now, but no joke, I'll show up with one of these things. And somebody goes like, man, I forgot my charger. And I'm like, you know what? These freaking things are 80 bucks a pop. They're real expensive. So, and you know what? I've offloaded a couple of them on people too, where I've just gone, you know what? Um, I have three of these and I don't have a laptop that works with this anymore. Here, you get to keep it. <laughs> uh, also the clicker thing for your slides. Yes. Bring yes. all the problems. Yes. And, and have your slides several places because like, I know you're like this all, you guys are all like this with backups. <laughs> But seriously, like I do my slides in Google Slides now. I used to do yep. it in Canva, but either way, I have, their, I have a PDF on my machine, on Dropbox, on mm -hmm. Google Drive. Mm -hmm. Because in Raleigh, two years ago when I gave the keynote, guess what? You couldn't use your own personal computer because it didn't work. We had to use the house computer, what? which means I decided to Google, which means I had to go to Google Drive, and there was my slides because that's how I did it. Right, oh I my it on gosh. PowerPoint. So if you use Keynote, that's fine. Keynote, PowerPoint, PDF, has, and then have them up in Google Drive and on your actual physical machine. Do not rely upon the internet working. It might not, because if they don't pay for it or whatever, or I don't know. Like I'm just <laughs> saying, it, it, be prepared because. Yeah. Please if be I, prepared. If I hadn't had my slides on Google Drive, I would have started crying in Raleigh. Yeah, that's that's rough. Because I'm so used to just plug in my HDMI cord. I bring an extra HDMI cord, but you never know what it's going to be like. And also, we do have an episode of w WQ Blab where we talk about specifically four speakers, all the things that you should do. But yes. if you are looking for a next generation shopping cart plugin that will ignite your e-commerce. And you need to go to B Vendor Fuel. It's almost Cyber Monday, guys. It's built using Angular JS. Vendor Fuel lets you keep your customers on your website for the whole checkout experience. Start with a 90-day free trial that takes you past the new year. Hint, hint. At and ignite your commerce at vendorfuel.com. That's vendorfuel dot. Com. It's tooler tip of the week. Tooler tip of the week. Do you want to start? Or do you want me to start? Well, I mean, I did because I, I I bought this. I <laughs> you already started. I, no, All right. Because I, I bought this little O ring thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, it's it's uh it's pretty cool. It's a selfie ring light by Quaya Q I A Y A. 
uh, with a rechargeable battery and it can it can be used on my cell phone or on uh, the you know computer whatever mm -hmm. it comes with a little cable Whoa, nice. so it's pretty lit right <laughs> and, uh, it has different settings click 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 nice but yeah it's an o-ring um it's a nice size and you know i used to do a lot of videos on my phone and even if you're taking selfies and stuff like that because you know you want to have selfies with your friends and we're camp us at the outdoor fires which are our bars right. um oh and um so that's that you know that's my i i bought it on amazon it was a good price. And I said, you know what? Why not? I don't have to be one of those crazy people. I just want something that's it's easy to carry. It's light. It's not a big deal. It fits in your backpack. And what's and what's nice about that one, um, I have one of those on my desk here where I can actually uh, dim the light and, and do all that sort of stuff. Um, what's nice about those is it makes it so that um, if you're the kind of person that wants the ring around the eye, it doesn't work very good on um, on glasses because you end up with just like another thing floating around in your in your view there. But um, but if you're taking a selfie and you want it to look really really nice and kind of give you that halo effect around your eyes, um, that's or in your eye, that's one of those um, great ways to kind of pull that off. It's also good to be able to you know get really close to. Um, you know, to your subject when you're, you know, to yourself when you're there and kind of really fill the frame with all that light. Um, and it, yeah, it just takes some time to kind of play around with it and go back and forth a little bit to kind of get it right. But it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. I wish I had had it a long time ago. And like I said, it has a good box, easy to fit in my backpack if I want to bring it, but I bought it specifically for this show. So. That's cool. No, that's, that's a, uh, that's a good, that's a good tip. Have something like that to be able to play around with. Um, wanted to share. It's funny that you brought that one up because, um, I've been playing with this and if you're somebody who's been following me on social media, um, you've probably seen a couple of these videos. Um, I, I got the new iPhone, um, the new iPhone, uh, let's see here. This would be the, uh, 11, 12, 12, 12. The new one. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, I wanted to show you this, uh, this interesting app that's called Dualgram. And what Dualgram does is it makes it so that you can actually split the screen. Oh, cool. Between, so you can see me front at the back. top and the bottom. Yeah, front and back. So what's nice about this thing is you can do a couple different things. I could have um, your face show up in the corner there if you wanted. Okay. Um, you can also have it and it actually works. I think it works. It should work on your phone if I remember correctly, Bridget. Okay. Um, but you can do front and back. Um, you can also have it where it's uh, a little box that's floating. See like this, Bridget, oh, you can see cool. a little box. Yeah. So I've been using these from when I go to the gym and I go work out and I want to just kind of show what I have going on. Um, I could do that and you can kind of just change the, you know, how much of the screen it's going to take up. You can also kind of uh, flip between the two. So if you wanted to kind of change that view, you could do that. And it's good for recording video. So, um, oh, if you're, like you were doing an interview, yes, like I could totally do an interview just like this. And you and I would both be on the, in the shot or on a tripod, which would be a lot better. On a tripod would be great. <laughs> and it also works. Um, it also works, you know, vertically as well as horizontally. Yes. horizontally. So it does both of them. No problem. That is so cool. Yep. Yeah. I mean, not Jen. That's your wife. <laughs> so oh, there's that one. That's so rad. Um, a bonus one, which does the same sort of thing. I'm more talking about the technology than I am about the, um, application. Uh, the application itself. There's another one called Spark Camera. And Spark Camera does the same sort of thing where you can have like a picture-in-picture -picture type view. Um, what I like about Spark Camera is you can actually use that as a way of um, taking little snippets of video and then it'll string them all together into one video and then you could post all of them at the same time. So if you're someone who wants to like record uh, like an Instagram story, but you want to have it more of a long gated, but so someone's not going to go and tap, 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 tap to fly through your story. Um, you can give them, you know, a longer form thing uh, to show up. So or that's, that's pretty neat too. Which lasts longer. 
Yep. yep. So you could do that too. So um, it's a it's a lot of fun between those two apps. Um, I'll have links in the show notes so you can take a look at it. It's Dualgram and Spark Camera. And uh, both of those are a lot of fun. I've been having a lot of fun with, especially with uh, dual, uh, Dualgram. It's been, uh, it's one of those things that they introduced um, the last version of the iPhone OS where they were uh, kind of talking about, oh, it'd be really neat to be able to do, you know, I think it was, uh, oh, you know, it was like, I think it was uh, iOS 12. We're on 13 now. And so iOS 12, they introduced this front and back camera thing and you had to have the latest and greatest version of the phone. Um, now with the um, iOS 13 and being able to use this, I think you can use it within the last two or three versions of the phone. So definitely go take a look at that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Spark Camera is one that you have to subscribe to. So I've been playing around with that with their trial. Um, but with the um, the other one, Dualgram, it's been a lot of fun to just take, you know, take little videos and stuff. And, you know, I walk my dog every night. And I'll do that and, um, and, you know, videotape, you know, him walking around peeing on things and uh, <laughs> my little tagger. And then, um, you know, when I'm at the gym, I can show both me working out as well as, and I'm not recording a long video, but it's just kind of cool because you can see both of them at the exact same time. And it works really great for Instagram. So um, feel free to go take a look at that. And if you're doing interviews, especially if you're doing interviews at a WordCamp, which we'll get back into our topic here because we got 10 more minutes, um, you could uh, you could do an interview at a WordCamp. So if you get one of those little tripods, and I don't have one sitting here on my desk, but if you get a little tripod and you can hold it between the two of you, um, mine actually has, uh, like my case here actually has a thing where you could kind of shove your um you know shove your credit card into the bottom here and they'll hold it up like this oh nice so if you wanted something like that you could probably pull that off there's also um some different products that are out there that will um act as it looks like the shape of a credit card but it'll make it so you can um you can use that as a little stand but there's all sorts of ways to do it even when bridget was at her most recent word camp she uh, propped her phone up on on the podium or wherever she was at and did that there's plenty of ways of doing it, but uh, it's nice because you don't have to have a whole bunch of camera equipment yeah. to make this happen. And all the modern phones have the ability to kind of do this sort of thing anyhow. So if you right. could do a front and back, back video, then that's great. And if you can't, cause your phone's a little bit older, that's fine. Um, you know, get in real close and be like, all right guys, here, let's, let's do a quick little interview and do a little interview. And, I've done that. Yeah. And those are fun. I was thinking about getting one of those tentacle ones, actually, because it's plastic. Uh huh. Have you seen those? Um, they like the. It's a stand. It's yeah. It's a stand. It oh yeah. Out. So a company called Joby, J O B Y. They make one of those. That's the one that all of the, uh, all of the uh, like YouTubers use. It's like a big old crazy long one, but you can also pop it open and make it into like a three legged um yeah tripod stand so yeah yeah there's a bunch of those there's also little knockoff ones that are on amazon and stuff to check out too but um the main thing is is to have something that will kind of clip your phone you know and to it, it and hold it so if you're gonna do that go find a quiet place to do it don't think you're gonna get any kind of privacy or sound reduction if you're in the sponsor hall which is a giant like five. Okay. Also remember when Je Jason said at the beginning of the episode, wear accessible shoes, you will be walking a 5k. Okay. That said, there's always a group of people that want to exercise in the be before either yoga or running, J go find them, put on Twitter in your bio. Don't put it in your name. That looks so stupid. I don't care if you see Morton doing it and I love it with all my heart, <laughs> put it in the bio. WCUS hashtag. Okay. You don't yeah. need at going or traveling to it's bad for screen readers. It looks like crap. It's a really bad trend that used to die a boring, long death. <laughs> However, <laughs> just put that you're going there. Okay. Use the hashtag, start talking to people that are going there, put them on a list, be prepared for who they are. Look at the attendee list, familiarize yourself. Look at the classes. Go to some classes, okay? I know you guys like the hallway track. It's all about networking. But if we stop learning, we die. This is technology. We yeah. need to, it's like, I, I hear so many of my friends, and I'm talking to you, friends, say, oh, I already know about that. Do you? 
you, I mean, you know everything there is to know. It's not just that. Sometimes it's hearing what people are saying in the class, hearing what their questions are. That makes you realize that you've missed out on a piece of information, especially if you have products or services to sell. Because Matt Cromwell from GiveWP.com, he went to a beginner class at Las Vegas like four years ago. And because of that, changed the way he did support. And they have open source to support manual and everything like that. You have to be part of the community. You're going to be lost. It's fun to talk to all your friends and hobnob and rub elbows. But you should go, be going to some of the classes. It's really important. to If you, if you think you're there, you're not. Nobody's and, I would, and I'd say that if you're going, if you're going to WordCamp US, for instance, and I was just, I was just popping on their site real quick just to kind of see what they had to offer here. If you go on their website, they have a section up here under info, under location, where they have great places to eat, where to get a great cup of coffee, and additional hotels and places to stay in St. Louis. These types of places, these are where other people are going to show up as well because they're going to the same website to look up the same information. So if you're looking for an off-site spot to go and hang out with, um, if you're um, if you're like Raquel, um, who she goes to all of these, she never goes to Starbucks when she's out in some, some other place. Yeah. She always goes to these crazy little coffee shops to go check them out. Um, these are the places that you need to go to because this is where everyone else is going to be going to. And if you're looking for great places to eat, they have a great places to eat place here as well. And so if you like barbecue, you know, there's barbecue. If There's all sorts of fun stuff to do. And so make sure you go look at the WordCamps website to figure out what it is that you need to do there. Yeah, um, one last really thing. Yeah. And one last thing regarding this particular camp in, in, in general is that this camp has a ton of extras. So, for instance, they're providing child care. They're providing a kid's camp. Kid's camps are huge. And these are the things that your kids are going to be able to learn. So, if you're, you know, if your significant other and the kids all came to the thing, you can go check it out and see what's going on there and be able to interact with your kid as well as drop your kid off and say, okay, have fun at that scavenger hunt at 1145 and then go run off and do their thing. So, definitely go take a look at that. Yeah, they did a really good job. I mean, WordCamp US has come a long way since 2015, and they're doing a yeah. good job on all that. Um, and they need to because they need to model for all the other camps that are out there. And if you want to learn about, you know, how to do accessibility right, they have a whole accessibility thing that's on here. And if you want to know about um, how uh, how to interact with people on Slack, here's a way to interact with people on Slack and all the stuff that you need on there as well. So. Before you go to any of these WordCamps, be it WordCamp US or to um, you know your local WordCamp, um, look up the information that's there or a WordCamp that you're going to a state or two away. Look up the information there, use the hashtags, make sure you're using the correct hashtag. A lot of people start using hashtags with the dates in them. Bridget and I hate those. And I know that some hashtag, wow. some of those wow. WordCamps will use the hashtag with the date as the official hashtag please stop doing that um so I, I get it i get it there's sometimes when those sorts of things happen but uh yeah look she's Brianna even bringing her children yep. yeah see they needed child care and they provided yeah i mean child care is a little tricky when um with insurance and liability and stuff, but they did it. Oh, yeah. So, I, I, I know. You work at a church. I remember <laughs> doing film ministry. Like, it's, it's, a, it, it's very difficult to offer child care at kids' camps at an event. It's There's a lot of insurance issues and fingerprinting and background checks. Uh -huh. So, like, it is, a, it is a huge effort that they did that. So, um, yeah, definitely um, – Try not to be the person who's bitching about everything. Nothing's going to be perfect. Just, no. it's a conference. It costs 50 bucks. And then you're, it's ran by volunteers. It's all volunteers. They're all volunteers. Like, be kind. The lines for lunch are going to be long. That is what it is. You're going to eat barbecue because that's what Matt wants us to eat. If you don't want to eat barbecue, eat somewhere else. Figure it out. They gave you places to eat. Um, yeah. And we'd love for you to subscribe uh, and share this episode with your friends 
And on the blog post or on the YouTube channel or on the Facebook or all the things or on Pippa or on anywhere you hear podcasts, we'd love to have your feedback. We'd also love for you to visit our sponsors, serverpress.com, kinsta.com, and vendorfuel.com. We're super excited that we have sponsors. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank my, my sponsor, Jason Tucker, who's been doing this for 10 hundred <laughs> years on the Water Cooler Network. How do you get on the show? That's a great question. Pitch yep. us your idea. Tell us if Thursday you're available. We do it every Thursday, except for when I'm traveling or the second Thursday. <laughs> and I hope Jason has other things to do. <laughs> I hope to not travel so much. You can also sponsor by going to wpwatercooler.com slash sponsor. You get tons and tons and tons of great stuff like graphics and extra shout outs and things like that and love and knowing that we are helping your brand awareness. So thanks a lot. I hope to see you at another word camp or online in 15 minutes, as my friend Carol says. Okay, see you on Twitter in 15 minutes. Bye.